All right, cool. So welcome to week two office hours. Um, like I said, um, up top, I've seen some of your faces before, but if you don't know who I am, my name is Theo Phillips. I am the Senior Director of Community Partnerships at the Human Institute at Remco for Children. And I'm joined by my colleague, Dennis Carter, Chief Program Officer, Youth Development Institute, Rampo for Children. Right. Um, like I said up top, this is really an opportunity for you all to ask some questions. Um, but what, what the basic kind of outlay is that for this, um, these sessions are, we're going to talk about things that you should be doing during the current week that we're in. We're going to be talking about some of the artifacts, some of the things you really need to be collecting from young people um, to really document this process along the way. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about what you should be thinking about in the week that's coming up next. Um, so that's kind of the layout for these things from week to week. Um, but also, like I said, completely giving you all space and opportunity to get the information you need to get so you can get back to your paperwork, get back to your young people. Or if it's time for you to go home, go home. Dennis, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I was just going to say um, for purposes of, you know, hey, this you're supposed to be here. I'm going to drop in the chat a link to the Eventbrite and just ask that if you didn't get a chance to register, just go ahead and register. And then that way we capture that information as well. So yeah, it might, it might, is it open still? Just check, it might be closed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the sale I'll check. Ended. Sales might have ended. Um, all right, so let's kick it, kick it off. We got some folks showing. We got some, we got, because we definitely have more folks here than who registered. So I don't know how y'all got these links, but y'all got the link king out there. Um, so one of the things that you've ever heard, you will always hear from Dennis and I is this notion of being extremely intentional, um, specifically with this, um, project-based learning model, the more intentional we can be about how we structure things up front, um, the more it gives young people their space for their input and their voice and choice once we get things kind of rolling and up and going. Um, so really being really intentional about how we set up things. Um, and then thinking about this week, what's going on this week, right? We're really still very much in the engagement age and engagement phase, right? So some of your young people started last week. You might have probably had some new some young people that started this week as well, right? Um, so when we talk about this notion of engagement, right, we're being very specific about relationship building, right? And really spending a lot of time during these first two weeks really developing those relationships, not only between you and the participants, but between the participants as well amongst themselves, right? One of the things I said um, during a lot of the training sessions was, got an opportunity to go out <clears throat> and um, do some observations over the summer last year, um, went out on the last day, um, the instructor decided that he was gonna do some team building exercises trying to just kind of loosen the kids up. The kids really enjoyed it. And the first thing they said was, why haven't we been, been doing activities like this all summer, right? So it really does not only come from us knowing what really has to happen in terms of this project-based learning process and those things associated with positive youth development, but really hearing from young people, these are things that they want to see as part of their experience and not just talking about project-based learning all the time, right? So one of the things that we're talking about is making sure we're putting this relationship building at the center of our systems and structures and our program kind of design. Right, um, and really thinking about what are we doing in our spaces that really create this notion of relationship building, right? Because it's really essential, not just in week one and week two, but also especially as young people start to investigate, young people really start to dig into the into the the project. It's going to be those relationships that really do allow those young people, when things aren't going well, to continue to push through things, right? So really making sure that we're spending a lot of time in the very beginning, setting that foundation by being very intentional about how we're developing those relationships amongst our group, right? Um, a large part of that starts by showing young people that you care, right? Letting them know that you are not just there to provide a service for them, that you genuinely also care about them as individuals and as the group of the group as a whole and how they function, right? That develops trust. Once young people feel like they can be trusted and you can be trusted, um, there's a sense of belonging in that space, right? And one of the things that we are 
dealing with is still this notion of the hybrid program, right? Some of you are doing some stuff virtually and some of you are doing some stuff in person, right? So how can we, regardless of whether we're virtual or in person, make young people feel like they belong in that space, right? Getting on these boxes and being in these boxes takes a lot of work to really engage young people in a way where they feel like the space is there, right? Once that kind of happens, it opens the door for young people to feel safe, right? And then also being very clear that this notion of reciprocity really, really lives very strongly in this notion of project-based learning. One of the things I heard from facilitator last summer was, oh my God, you know, they want to do this video project and I don't know how to edit video. And I said, well, I guarantee you one of your young people knows how to edit video. And she emailed me two days later and she's like, I got four kids that know how to edit video, right? So being very clear that this notion of reciprocity is also not only we doing things with young people, but also understanding that young people come to the table with strengths um, and already have knowledges and skills as well, right? And that this is a two-way street, especially in project-based learning, right? Where we're learning from each other and learning together. And I guess we wanna, we wanna connect the dot again to your project plans, right? Like, like all of you have talked about orientation. All of you have talked about what's going to happen during week one. So you should be collecting, creating artifacts that are associated with how you and young people began to talk about the connection that exists between them and you, both from an activity perspective and a program perspective. So, so let's make sure that you're thinking about what that looks like from an artifact perspective. Everything that you do, there should be something that has come from young people that's in their portfolio that says that you did this. Remember, we're, we're planning with the end in mind. So when you start talking about what happened this summer, you want to make sure that you've got real clear ways of helping your young people think about week one week two, so forth and so on. So any orientation, any team building activities that you're doing that are designed to help you connect them to each other and connect them to you, that's the first artifact that needs to be in their folder and, and directly connect that to voice and choice, right? And we'll dive a little bit deeper around that um, as we move forward, but giving them the opportunity to figure out what goes in their portfolio that, that speaks to what they've done with you in those early sessions, in those early dialogues, is the first way you let them demonstrate that they have voice and they had choice in what goes into their portfolio. Any questions about portfolios? So just threw that out there. Any questions about portfolios? That's an important piece. Any questions about portfolio? What the hell do you mean by portfolio? That's okay if that's a question. But if that's not a question, we will move forward. And I did just drop in the chat for anybody who didn't get a chance to register the link to the event, right? Please go in. Fill it out just so that we, we could take attendance for you, um, because that's what we use to really talk about whether or not you were here. Todrick, I see you unmuted. Um, when you say register, you mean for this class or for next Wednesday? For, for this, for this one. Oh, okay, I'll register. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. Yeah, and also, folks, um, just wanted to, as folks are joining, um, notice a lot of folks have joined since the beginning. Um, please drop your name and organization in the chat so we know who's here. Um, and like I said, and just dropped in the chat, I don't know if folks got a chance to see this, um, but if you have staff that aren't present today, this session is being recorded and a version of this will be available um, on the website. So, we talk about community norms. We're talking about this notion of relationship building, right? Um, one of the things that we've learned in our practices, not only with young people and with adults, uh, and but with the, not only with adults, but also with young people, is this notion of these community agreements, right? Um, and really figuring out how young people 
are going to really come into the space and work with each other over the course of the summer. Um, these are some, this is something that we have found. Um, not only will you be able to lean on, but as they develop those relationships and get to know each other, um, young people will start to lean on those community agreements, right? Um, and being clear that you might set those things up in kind of that first week, but those that's something that needs to be revisited weekly, daily, however often you need to do it. Um, but it has to be something that doesn't just live in that first week uh, because norms and agreements change as things evolve, especially as relationships evolve, right? So you might not be having difficult conversations in the first two weeks, but as you get to week three and week four and you're really diving into that notion of investigation and you're really talking about things that might be um, controversial and things that might that have different perspectives and your perspective skews how you view things, you'll need these norms and these community agreements to really help guide the group to keep young people both physically and psychologically safe. Any questions about how this gets done? So we've got some community norms for this group, right? And these are some that we like to make sure you are aware of. This is a judgment-free zone. Dennis Carter and I do not work for the Department of Youth and Community Development. We do not rate you or grade you or do anything to that notion. Um, we're really here to support you all. Um, and that notion, all questions are good questions, right? Um, if this is a question that you think might only be relevant to you, that's totally fine. This space is really for that kind of, for that, for those opportunities, right? Um, and then come as you are. Um, we understand that you all are engaged in doing a lot of different things. Um, some of you have young people that you're jumping in between and out of workshops with right now. Um, some of you have payroll to do, whatever it might be. But we all, we are very aware that you have things you need to do. Um, so the, the way these will be rolled out is, you know, come as you are. If you've got one question and that's really all you need and that's all you have time for, jump on, ask that question, get out of Dodge, right? Um, as I said, these, these will be recorded. Um, so you'll have access to them um, at a later time if you need to do so. So we really talked a lot about this during um, the trainings and really making sure that you're using some of these DYCD tools to really kind of embed into your program some of the things that they'll be looking for specifically during your site visits. But also these are just good general practices for developing that foundation for what's gonna really help your groups and your young people thrive over the course of these six weeks, right? So we're really making sure that we're creating this, this notion of supportive relationships, right? Where we're talking to young people about their point of views and their perspectives and recognizing that they come from different cultures and different backgrounds, right? We're trying to make sure that our young people feel like they're important and an, a special part of our program, right? So instead of cohort one, cohort two, cohort three, let's give those cohorts names, right? Or have them have those young people come up with names for their cohorts or their groups so that they're not just kind of those, these numbers, right? Um, we talk about this appropriate structures, right? Um, one of the things that comes up routinely over the course of the summer is how do we work with young people with learning challenges, right? One of the ways to overcome young people with learning challenges is to address their learning needs with as many different learning styles as possible, right? So we're not just looking at words and talking to people. We're showing videos, we're listening to music, we're using images, all those things that we really understand spark different people's learning styles, right? That's how you keep young people engaged. That's how you keep people engaged in general, right? This notion of integration of family, school, and community, right? How do we really work with the resources that we have available to us through our program, through the school we might be in, through our community, right? And then also thinking about how are we gonna tie this all into maybe what might be our final presentation, right? right. And, and again, during week one, just from, a, from a, a program plan perspective, you're doing things that are directly associated with getting them to understand their career interests, or you're doing things that are directly associated with whatever the larger theme is. So you wanna make sure that you're doing that using appropriate structures, right? Because 
you have to give them information in multiple ways. The information that you give them in multiple ways is directly connected to the outcome that you're looking for during these first couple of weeks. So again, making sure that you are collecting your artifacts that are connected to that. So all the time when we're, when we're talking about how we're using these frameworks, we're using the frameworks to make sure that we can move the young person towards the outcome. So making sure that your structures are right is the way that you get to that either program outcome or any product that you're looking to create. So when Theo said, we know that we're trying to get to the end, how we start is, is, the, is the, 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 the process. So making sure that during week one, when your participants are becoming aware of the term career exploration, you have to have a way in which you're presenting that information if that's something that you're looking to do. Again, if you're looking to make sure that your participants are practicing critical thinking or that they're beginning to effectively communicate, this is where those structures come in. So using this framework as a way of getting to the outcome is what you're doing. It's a one-to-one. -one. You know the what, this is sometimes the how, and the why. And then the young person, every step of the way is creating some kind of a, a, a almost like a, a, a breadcrumb trail. Like those are those artifacts, right? How do I know I did this? So you always want to make sure that you're doing that. And that goes into the portfolio. Remember, if you don't have a concrete example of it, then the young person might forget. And more importantly, during your visits, you won't be able to demonstrate the things that happened on the day when, when the visitor wasn't there, right? Because that's the other thing that the artifacts do. The artifacts show somebody who isn't present what happened. Does that make sense, everybody? Cool. The artifacts also help the young people reflect on the process as well, right? This is what we've done over the course of the summer. Right, especially when we get caught up on what that final project looks like, you know, just a reminder that project based learning is not necessarily a presentation of your final your final findings I've we've changed the world. It's not that it's really a documentation of the process and where you are at that current moment at the end of this engagement. Right, so you might not have come up with an answer, but you can come to some conclusions based off of what you've discussed and what you've learned over the course of the summer, and that's your presentation, right? So really important that you're documenting and collecting things from them over the course of the summer, because sometimes waiting for that presentation to be what it's gonna be might leave you a little shorthanded, right? Um, we talk about this notion of skill development, um, really making sure um, that we're developing leadership skills and social emotional competencies with our young people. So some of the things that we talked about specifically during our trainings was this notion of, you know, being really intentional about how we conduct check-ins with our young people, right, and using time to check in with our young people as an activity. Some of the things that we offered were specifically like the weather report, you know, where you ask young people, you know, what's your weather, how you doing today? Um, I'm a little cloudy, but there's some sun at the end of the day, blah, blah, blah. That's great. What's the clouds? What's the sun? Right. But being very clear that that's an activity. That's not something that happens as young people are just walking in the door and sitting down and getting settled. That's something that we do first 15 minutes before we get started every day. Right. That's what we're talking about. This opportunity to make a difference. Right. And this is really critical, specifically when we're talking about using project based learning as a work readiness strategy. That we're really connecting real careers and opportunities to young people through the notion of the things that they're learning during this process, right? And then the other two, which are really critical, this notion of physical and psychological safety um, and this notion of positive social norms, right? That we're really spending time at the beginning creating those agreements with our young people so that they're part of the process in terms of creating the environment that's respectful for them. Um, and that they're setting, you know, we all understand that they're going to be certain non-negotiables that you're and rules that your program has. However, there are other things around the physical and psychological safety that young people can do to reduce the bullying and to figure out how to manage conflict amongst each other, right? Because conflict management 
is a huge work readiness skill. Think about some of your some of your coworkers that lack work readiness. I mean, not work readiness that lack um, conflict management skills. And you're like, how'd you get a job this far in life, right? So just making sure that we're being very clear that this is something that we can use um, this time with our 14 and 15 year olds to really embed a lifelong skill in them. Right. And again, making sure that all along the way, you're really clear with them about the why, right? That there's the connection and that you are and that you have a clear way of connecting that dot back. So during week, during these first few weeks where you're really talking to them about what's going to happen over the course of the summer from both a why and a how perspective, you want to be really clear and then you, you should match that up with your outcomes. Every week, there's a level of outcome that you are looking to move your young people towards. So these coaching sessions that we're doing here are designed to really help you kind of stay, stay connected to the, the project and its outcomes. And then together, we could talk out strategies around how you're implementing things and ultimately making sure that you are capturing that process along the way, along the way, all right? So, so we want to make certain that, that you are thinking about during these first few weeks, here are some outcomes that I should be moving towards. But before I say that, you know, let me, let me, let's do a check. Like, what are some, what are some of the outcomes that you are looking for in your participants during the first few weeks of program? Anybody you could drop it in the chat, but we'd love to hear your voice. You can unmute, please. What are some of your, your, your program outcomes for the first few weeks? I would say like, uh, as you were mentioning, building relationships between them, uh, between the, the facilitators and the students, but also uh, the, the, um, the young people themselves. Um, and then also just start like getting into I would say like the, the macro things, right? So whatever topic you're talking about, so sort of start uh, brainstorming on the macro things before you dive into the specifics of everything. Excellent. Anybody else? Some of those big, big, big picture things that you're working on during these first couple of weeks. So I'll give you a couple other ones, right? And, and, and Andy, you mentioned them, right? Like making sure that you're given that big picture macro of this is what we're going to do from a theme perspective. Um, during week one, you want to start talking about this notion of you voice and choice, right? Again, talking about the fact that your program is designed to help them talk about things, help them think about things, and then make decisions about how they're going to work together. Uh, you want to talk about and create in many spaces some frequently used terms, right? Because a lot of what is going to happen during week one is that people are going to be tossing out stuff that, that the young person may not have heard of. So during week one, you want to level set all of those things that your young people may hear throughout the course of their time together. And then the biggest thing, and Andy hit it, right? Team building. So much of what needs to happen during these first few weeks is bringing them together and talking to them about how they're going to work together. And then make sure that you're documenting for yourself, like, what are the things that we did? Do, did I do career exploration? Did I do, did I spend some time talking to them about critical thinking or effectively communicating? You want to be able to be real clear about what's going to happen over the summer and what they're going to need to know how to do in order to make that happen. All right. So here's what we're going to do. And here's what we're going to need to know how to do. And certainly in the, in the first few weeks, you really want to level set against their skills and abilities so you're not reinventing or reteaching something that your young people already know. Remember, positive youth development, asset-based approach. So you want to know what they know how to do. 
Don't assume that you have to teach everything, okay? All that stuff is happening in these first few weeks. Any questions about that? It's all making sense. This must be how their sessions go when they're in virtual <laughs> sessions. Nobody talks back to them and they just sit in silence. Now nah, they're all in person, so they're having great dialogue with their young people. That's yeah. they're, not <laughs> stuck. they're not stuck doing this in boxes. <laughs> Um, you know, like, so we just mentioned, you know, really spending some time and making sure some of these things are really embedded in your process. You know, this notion of really creating a space where young people feel physically and psychologically safe, right? Um, it's really difficult to learn when you don't feel physically or psychologically safe, right? When you don't know whether you belong in a space, it's really difficult for you to express your opinion on things. Right, so it's really important that we spend a lot of time in these first two weeks letting young people know that these things are really important to our program. That we want to make sure that you feel physically and psychologically safe when you come into this space. That you understand that you've created a respectful environment that's diverse and and, and is note and is respectful of all cultures. Right, that your program understands young people. Right. There's nothing worse than a program that right off the bat doesn't understand young people, all right? So making sure that we understand young people and that they are clear that we understand their point of view and their cultures by asking them questions and not constantly speaking and talking to them, right? And last, like I said, um, really thinking about how you can integrate family, school, and community into your efforts, right? Um, one of the things that is very difficult to do is for this, for your voice to be the only voice that young people hear over the course of the summer, right? Figure out how you can bring community folks into the fold. Um, as much as Zoom is a thing, it's also a thing, right? If there are folks that you need to talk to, you know, used to be I had to wait till I was in your neighborhood or in your community um, to come by and talk to young people or talk to you. Um, now through this miracle of Zoom, person can be anywhere and log in and talk to your young people for 30 minutes to an hour, right? Um, so really figuring out how we can leverage Zoom um, in a way where we're incorporating other folks from the community um, who might not be able to come into our spaces solely because of some of the restrictions we still might have in some of our buildings, right? Which I think are pretty much all kind of done. Um, so artifact collection. Um, what are some of the things that we should be collecting this week? Um, we talked about some of those things up top. Um, a lot of that stuff is going to live in some of these relationship building activities you're doing with young people. It's going to live in your, your norms will be an artifact, right? Because that's and it, it'll be interesting to see how those norms shift and change over the course of the summer, right? You know, maybe using a different color marker as you add new norms to things so young people can see things have changed. Um, and somebody that walks in can see that things have changed. Um, there, you know, there's some other things that you can be collecting from them, um, especially like some of those get to know you questionnaires, um, some of those activities, interest gathering things that you might be doing with your young people. Great opportunity to, to start collecting artifacts around things like that. Um, and one of the things that I'll say is, in the website, we have a lot of activities um, and things like that that we'll, we'll get to in a second to show you um, that kind of live and speak to some of the things that we're talking about in terms of artifact collection from, from this first week. That being said, go ahead, Dennis. Yeah, I was going to say, remember, in <clears throat> for those of you who, who um, are accessing the website, right, and, and Theo's, we're about to show this, right, like, Go into the portfolio. Remember, point your young people to the activities that are all about how they introduce themselves, that are all about how they, they, they are literally showing up. Print those things out. Put them in the portfolio. Begin to build that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are tons of artifact tools that live on the website that that on those days that you're bringing them in, or if you sent them something, that they can just print those things out, fill them in, and you put them in a folder. Remember, the idea is not for you 
to have to figure all of this out. There are tons of resources that exist for you. As Theo said, in a facilitator's guide, there are resources. In, in their portfolio, there are resources. So this is a great opportunity for you to kind of get them going right away and connect the dot to your long-term goals and objectives for the summer. Remember, you, you, you just want to be able to help them, you know, be able to reference back to things. So using the website and using your in-person time, right? We talk about asynchronous and synchronous learning as a, as a path is what you want to do. The more you do that early during week one, the more accustomed to it your young people will be in weeks three, four, and five when the action is happening. So, so lean into this, even if you're doing other hats and ladders related activities. Again, all you want to keep doing is figuring out how am I documenting the process? And for that, the website is a really good tool. Um, so here's the website. I dropped the link in the chat. Um, we'll also remind you, even if you have um, a, 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 not a co-locator, a subcontractor that you're using to do, you know, to facilitate your project-based learning, and they're coming with their own tools, um, we also host um, focus groups at the end of the summer. And we've talked to a few of those folks, and they've been like, wow, I wish I had known about this website as well. Um, so even if you have somebody that's doing these things or you have your own curriculum already, um, this website has a lot of resources to help support um, and offset because sometimes you have things planned and they don't work out um, or they don't come to fruition. So this has a lot of doc backup stuff that you can activities you can pull from um, just to keep young people engaged in this project based learning process. Right. Um, so some of the resources you know, the facilitator resources, um, just so folks know, but here's your facilitator guide, really walks you through how to use this, this website, how to use this curriculum, um, really walks you through kind of where you should be from week to week. Uh, it's 90 pages long. There's a lot of information in there, um, but it's, it's, you know, there's a good, there's a good, um, table of content up here that'll help you figure out what you need in order to kind of like really answer the question you need at that moment. Um, so I really think folks should really take advantage of using this piece as well. Um, and as you will see, a lot of the training videos that we do over the course of the summer will be showing up down here. Some of these things are from last summer and they'll be switched out and upgraded as we move through the summer so that you have more current stuff and things that are relevant to this summer. Um, ba, 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 ba. right down here, there's a thing on energizers and icebreakers to really give you guys some, some activities you can do with some young people to young people. Um, and that's what's under facilitators resources. Um, when we talk about portfolio workbooks, Um, as Dennis said, two things. The workbook is for 14-year-olds and 15-year-olds. You have two different workbooks here. They're pretty much, they're pretty similar, um, except for the 15-year-olds, because they might have done this last year. It dives a little bit deeper and asks some more specific questions around career opportunities. Um, and this is really more less around less about career exploration as what's happening for the 14 year olds more about career identification and pathways that happens for the 14 and 15 year for the 15 year olds. <clears throat> but in the workbook, as you, as you said, there'll be all of these kind of like self guided things like this is information about myself. So this is a document right here that can be used to, to start building that portfolio. We have some things about reflection in here, um, like, you know, what do you know about project-based learning? What are some things you're thinking about? Um, and these are all things you can start to put into those portfolios so you can show and document the growth of those participants over the course of the summer.
in the library. We've got the digital library. So based off of whatever your whatever your project plan is, whether it's civic engagement, climate justice, public safety, community mapping, which is one that we added this year, SYP Pride. Um, if you click on that, these will take you to a whole bunch of other resources associated with this project plan, um, other places you can go to get more information to support what you're doing with your young people. One of the things that we always try to point out is this tab right here. This is in almost, this is in all of our project plans. This tab right here that says Youth-Led Participatory Action Research, YPAR. <clears throat> this is another great, re great hub um, that really does help young people understand what project-based learning is, what research is, how to do research. Um, and there are some other activities in here that you can do with your young people as well to help develop and build that portfolio over the course of two years. Any questions about any of this stuff so far? And again, we just want to we want to keep saying the same thing, right? Like, as your young people explore things, remember if you you just want to make that make sure that they are documenting their process in their own words. So, giving them an opportunity to follow up um, by using the, the the other resources that live within their their workbooks, um, live within the portfolios really does allow them to talk about all of the work that they've done without you. So we, we know that there is both synchronous time that they're spending with you in group, but there's also asynchronous research time that they're spending. You, you wanna capture the asynchronous time because as you begin to, to assert, to um, assess a value of the amount of time that they spend week by week, you have to have documentation. So if you say that this activity should take an hour, you want to have something that they give you that says this is what they did in that hour. If it was watch a video or fill out a form or go wherever, there are plenty of, of activities that they could do through the portfolio workbook that they would be able to document that process. Please help your young people by helping them document and then make a direct connection to whatever the outcome is from a skill or a career exploration process that you were doing during that week. Connect the dots. So much of what these artifacts do for your young people and for you is connect dots. If you do a training or you do an activity with them, make sure that you've connected it so that the young person knows, oh, this is why we did it. And now I can write down for myself what I learned, right? So you, they're, not, they're not parroting something that you told them. They're actually giving you their thoughts on something that happened. You're going to need that later when you talk about voice and choice. And, and, and from a perspective of PBL, this notion of critique and revision, remember, Every, every week, there should be an opportunity for them to talk to you about what they've done and what they may want to do differently, right? That's critique and revision. So, so again, the more documents you have, the easier it is for you guys to have a conversation. It also allows you, if they don't have documents, to be able to say, well, a big part of the reason why you don't get it is because you haven't done the work. Again, having clear things that are not subjective is a big part of this process when you're kind of talking about what they've learned, what they've experienced, what they've explored. So, so please give yourself and give your young people that, that option of being able to track through each week and connect it in a, in a clear way to the learning goals associated with every week. So this week, everything is all about career, like what is career exploration? Everything is about meeting each other and developing our, our, our team, getting our routines together. So there are plenty of things that they could be doing that really allow you to document that process. And, and that's what you want to make sure that when you get to whatever your last day for this week, both you and they have the evidence of what has happened.
And the link for the Berkeley um, for the Berkeley website lives in our YPAR, and I'll drop that into the chat in two seconds. All right. Yep. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right, let's get back to the information because we're pretty much done. Um, really starting to think about what's ahead, what's going on next week. We talked about making sure that we're developing these relationships and we're beginning to, to um, collect artifacts from our young people. We're really going to be started as we move and shift into week three, really starting to move into the investigation phase, right? Can you believe it? We'll be half, almost halfway through by next week, by the end of next week, at least. Um, so let's start really thinking about investigation. Um, an investigation is where the young people start to identify um, something that's authentic to them, something that's relevant to them based off of the, the, the project theme that you're, you and your organization selected ahead of time. Um, and they're really gonna start to dive into why these things matter to them. Therefore, they have to really start leaning in um, to those, those group norms and those group agreements. All right, so artificial intelligence, ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid of it. Don't tell them not to use it. Right. There, it's, there's parts of it that are very useful. Um, I'm in the process myself of learning how to use these things um, in a way that's ethical, right? Um, but also gets things done. Um, you know, one of the things I was just playing with was, you know, some one of the challenges that we have sometimes is our young people don't all speak the same language. Um, this actually takes chat GPT. Um, if you take a document and you cut and paste it and drop it in that chat and say, translate to Russian, it will translate that document into Russian. Um, and I've played with it a little bit where I took the translation and then I put it into a different app and it almost translated everything back into the original language verbatim. Um, so it's actually pretty good. Um, I've seen people... Um, <laughs> Diana has already found it. I hope she's not using it to write reports um, for her agency. Uh, but it is, it is one of those things where you can say, hey, this is like the kind of spreadsheet that I'm trying to set up and it'll kind of produce these things for you. Um, so really um, don't, don't, don't shy away from it. Um, figure out how you and your young people can take advantage of it and use it. Um, they're also like video options where you can drop video clips in and say, this is the type of mood I'm looking for and it'll cut that video for you, right? I need a 10 second video. I need a 30 second video from this, you know, this five minute, these five minutes of video and it'll cut it for you. Um, so let's really start taking advantage of these things. Let's not hide from them because um, our young people know how to know about them. They just might not be using them correctly. Um, and just going back to work readiness and making sure that we're teaching young people how to use things in a way that can be applicable towards work um, this is one of those instances where you might be learning something on the job as well um, and, and, and learning something new that you can apply to your own work. Um, so check it out. Um, Chat GPT is one that, I, that I've started messing around with and playing with and already got an endorsement from one person on, on, this, on this Zoom thread. Um, so really check it out, see how you can maybe use it with your young people through this process. All right. Other thing that we really want to make sure of is that these are the skills, the attitudes and skills and attributes that we're really trying to focus on as well. Um, as we're developing our young people and going through this process, you know, we want to make sure that they're motivated, self-aware and persistent um, and that they're confident and then they're practicing active listening. So that as we're doing these things, um, we have to, as, as we look at these skills, we need to really go back at our project design and really look at our activities and see where we're actually, besides the actual project-based learning process, we're being very intentional about how we're developing these skills with our young people, right? So when we talk about something like active listening and communicating effectively, going back to the beginning where we talked about doing check-ins as an activity, right? If I'm doing a check-in as an activity, as a group, where we're sitting down, right? And during that 15 minutes, I have to effect, effectively communicate to the rest of the group how I'm doing as an individual, and the rest of the group has to listen to me while I do that, right? Young people are 
at practicing their active listening while also communicating effectively and also developing confidence at the same time, right? So in that 15 minutes of doing those check-ins on a daily basis, these are some of those intentional strategies we can use to develop those skills and attitude attributes in our young people we really wanna see them walk away with, right? Because at the end of the day, it's not only the skills that they need to get the job, but to keep the job. That's it, folks. Questions? What do you need from us? How can we help support you? Nancy, good to see you. You always come out, Nancy. Always a pleasure to see you. Where, what organization are you from again? I mean, I'm so mad at myself. I should know this by now. Community Association of Progressive Dominicans. Got gotcha. you. Cool. Um, the table is open, the floor is open to folks. Um, like I said, this is your opportunity um, for us not to just be speaking to you, but for you to ask questions that hopefully will spark other questions from folks here. Um, believe you, believe me, folks, there are some folks that have done this before, but a lot of folks that have not done this before. Um, so if you've got some questions, now's the time to ask them. You don't feel comfortable asking the question out loud, you can side chat the question to me and or Dennis and we'll raise it up to the group and do it anonymously if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. Did a really good job this training season, Dennis. Because people uh, don't people, <laughs> people don't have people don't have any questions when they come to the to these things. Like, oh, you guys covered everything. I don't, uh, I don't have any questions. Here's the other thing: we are also not in the habit of just staring at people on Zoom. So, like I like we said at the top. These, this is a two hour block that we hold on Wednesdays from two to four. Um, and, um, you know, come as you can for as long as you can, ask the questions you need to ask and keep it pushing. Um, yes, uh, I think I, I, I don't, I, Samantha about the question about AI. Um, I think it's something that we should embrace. Um, it is something that um, is going to be a part of our world moving forward, clearly. And the more comfortable we are with it, um, the more we can guide young people on how to use it properly as they do the, do this project um, over the course of the summer. Uh, 